Okay, so here we go. Welcome to Carving a New Path. My name is Andrea Hyland. I am the founder of Heal My Voice and the host of this show. Well, this podcast is filled with stories and tools and resources to help you pause and reflect on the life you are living while opening to new possibilities. Most of us were raised in a society that encourages productivity and do, do, do. And it isn't until a life circumstance like a job layoff or an illness, or the birth or death of a loved one, something that disrupts your daily routine that you slow down to pause and reflect on your life. And in the stillness of slowing down, you have an opportunity to carve a new path. Well, 2020 has created a global disruption with COVID-19 and the spotlight on racial injustice, which is calling us to pause and reflect, to make changes and heal. So today's show is called Chef, Crystals, Herbs, Essential Oils and Food with Cassandra Herbert. So let me tell you a little bit about Cassandra before we start our conversation. She is a registered nurse, a holistic nurse psychotherapist, a certified health and wellness coach, a nutritional endocrinology coach and educator, speaker and author, and the creator of Zest and Harmony. As a holistic nurse, therapist, educator, and coach, Cassandra holds a vision of changing the current healthcare system from a culture of sick care to one of health and wellness. She has built her life around empowering people to advocate for themselves and adopt lifestyle changes to support their own wellness. After seeing her own health and perspective on life challenged by the superwoman syndrome, she was forced to reevaluate and reframe her lifestyle, career, and relationships. Out of that experience, Cassandra developed an eight-part holistic system to support the modern-day real-life superwoman to create more zest and harmony in her life with medicines from the earth, crystals, herbs, essential oils, and food. And in the show comments, I've posted all of the links on how to get in touch with Cassandra from her website, zestandharmonycounseling.com, to Facebook and Instagram that are Zest and Harmony, and then her YouTube channel that you should really check out also. That's under Cassandra Herbert, because that's where she talks a lot and does these videos on crystals, herbs, essential oils, and food. So, okay, I have that out of the way. Welcome to the show, Cassandra. Thank you, Andrea. I'm so delighted to be here. It's, it's so wonderful to connect. And uh, Cassandra and I talked a little bit before we pressed record for the show. And, you know, it's just hard to believe that we had not actually talked in 2020 other, through, other than through texting or stalking each other on social media to see what we're up on. And, and also we've been sharing a lot of books and resources this year too. I, that was something we hadn't really talked about, but we're reading a lot of the same books and, um, you know, watching films and continuing to learn and heal and, and educate ourselves about um, the world we live in. Let's put it that way. So I just wanted to start before we talk about Chef, you know, one of the things I love to do on this show is really talk about the realness of your life, because there's a reason that you came up with taking care of yourself and superwoman syndrome, certainly, but I just wanted to give some space for you to talk about what has it been like this year, like the last few months, the last six months, the 2020, whatever you want to share. I just want to hold a space here for you to share with us what's been going on with you. Thank you, um, Andrea. So yes, like many of us, 2020 has been a year of that, who could have really predicted that we would be where we are with everything that's happened. Um, I mean, 
from all the different emotions. I think it was back in February, I think, I don't, <laughs> that uh, I remember um, Kobe Bryant passed away. I think that was like February. And it was like um, that, that was unexpected. And then, you know, we went into um, March and the end of March. And that was when it, about COVID and COVID-19 and everything. And um, I'm a nurse, so I, 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 I'm a nurse manager and uh, working at a, you know, a hospital, not necessarily bedside, but I have at least 70 staff members that I'm um, over three different units. And it was, it was a lot, you know, because none of us knew, none of us knew what this was. We knew it was a virus. We knew that it, it, you could get it and we knew that people were dying from it you know and so that was like, like okay what do, you know what <laughs> what does that mean what does that look like and no one really knew um if you all can go back to march and april and remember how that was and so that was a lot and i would you know hospitals a lot of the hospitals that we heard about was new york you know and how they you know didn't have enough um, beds for people, that people were dying, that the protective equipment, so shields and, and, and masks, and not even knowing what to wear. And so I remember we would have meetings at nine o'clock in the morning and we would be told, you know, this. And then at one o'clock it would change because we would be, they would look at things like the CDC and they would look at things on, you know, the media and it would be like, no, it's not this, it was this. And I remember telling my staff, okay, what I tell you at nine will probably be different at one. It felt so, there was a lot of emotion and not a lot of overwhelm and feeling of confusion <laughs> because as a leader, not that I know everything, but I should at least know <laughs> how to protect the staff and at least what's coming out of my mouth at nine should kind of be the same as what's coming out at five and it wasn't, you know? So that was a lot, um, even, being, you know, being in the hospital and not knowing, okay, could I get this? Could, you know, um, because if staff could get it and this, and at first we weren't ma wearing masks and then, then we were, and then we weren't having meetings. We were having meetings on Zoom. So that was a thing. I mean, I had been using Zoom for like three years, but <laughs> that was a new thing for the hospital to be using Zoom. Um, it was, it was a, it was a lot. There was, you know, the unpredictability, feeling kind of out of control. I, I'm like one of those people who were laughing, not laughing, but laughing at people who were like stocking up on toilet paper. But then <laughs> people were saying a lot of that was just because people felt like that was what they could control. But I'm thinking, I'm also one of those people who don't go to the store when it snowed, you know, cause I'm from upstate Rochester, New York. So, so it was just interesting, but I go, I guess it could be bad if you ran out of toilet paper, but there's other options. So that was always, that was interesting. Um, and then, you know, we go into May and then, you know, uh, with George Floyd, which I never have watched that whole entire video because it was so overwhelming, hurtful, just the amount of emotion. And then afterwards to realize that people were not even seeing like what I was seeing, like I'm this was a man who was killed, like killed with the, he couldn't breathe. He was yelling for his mother. And I'm thinking, this is horrible. Mm -hmm. And then all the things of just thinking, this isn't the first time there have been racial injustices, you know? So this wasn't the first, but it was just so, like we were talking, it's like, was that tipping point? It was so palpable. And it was, it was like, and then everyone was talking about it. And that was challenging because again, I was in a leadership role. I was going to the hospital. It was, I was feeling so much emotion, so much pain, so much grief, grief for um, just black people 
as a whole, all the injustice that have happened, it helped. It, what it did was I dived in more, learning more about, you know, black history, injustices in the 60s, slavery, you know, Jim Crow, all of those things. Um, it was, it was, it was a lot of emotions. I would say from February basically until almost till September or mid August where I actually felt like this was more the winter time. You know, I just, I just felt like I wanted to, I mean, we, most of us were forced to be inside, but it was like, I didn't feel social. I just, I wanted to take a pause. I knew I wasn't depressed, but it was basically like winter time and, 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 and fall time is a time in traditional Chinese medicine for that grieving, you know? Mm -hmm. And so spring felt like fall and summer felt like winter. And I just kind of just, I was very protective of who was in my space um, emotionally, like who I could talk to. I felt like I didn't really want it to talk to people. And again, it was just more, I need to just build up my reserve because I knew I had to be there at work for people. We had this COVID-19, I, you know, then my own emotional, um, emotions regarding the racial injustices. So it was very, very much my boundaries and where I was at. So I felt like September, there was a lift or mid the end of August where I was feeling more emotionally like okay and in fact it almost felt like spring even though it's autumn like I was like ah I can do things I felt like I I, I felt more creative whereas before it was just like not more inward more journaling more you know meditation I was just felt like every day I needed to ground myself I needed to meditate I needed to pray I needed to journal I needed to light candles. I needed to be outside in nature and just be in nature, trees. I mean, I was outside barefooted, hugging trees because I just felt like I need this. And I wanted to connect more with my ancestors. And that's, you know, like going on to ancestry.com and learning more about that. So, and that was a lot of, um, emotions too, but I know that was a long answer. To no, that's, that's exactly, I mean, I really wanted to hear your experience and, you know, I've shared a little bit about things that were going on for me also, but, you know, something that you said, I just wanted to say that this, there's the current moment that's happening. And then by diving into more reading and watching films and having more history that's be, that's been uncovered really i mean to me a tipping point for me was freddie gray in 2015 in baltimore that was when i started to realize that that i had black friends black colleagues who never talked about things like being stopped by the police in their you know, middle to upper middle class neighborhoods and things like that. That was my, that was my realization that I had surrounded myself by diverse, in a diverse community where not everyone was sharing what was really happening in their lives. So, but this year, you know, five years after Freddie Gray, this the George Floyd and the uh, Ahmaud Arbery and Breonna Taylor and, and that kind of uh, one right after the other in three different situations and it being captured on film where we could all see it, we were diving into also the past. And so looking at, for instance, the Black Panthers of the 60s and 70s and the assassinations that were happening of people who were, were saying, okay, we have a, a problem in the low income areas, let's all come together and come up with programs, lunch or breakfast programs and healthcare programs and things like that. And then being assassinated. I think that, that what's been unleashed this year is not only what's happening in the present moment, but this realization of how many lies and how much division has been created by our, our government, 
by, you know, for, I, I mean, I think that's the, there's that betrayal and there's that level of emotion that's coming up. And then you as a black woman, you're carrying it in your DNA and the cells of your body, the history of, of generations of your ancestors. And, um, you know, and as, as a white woman, I, I had encouraged my mother to get the certification of the Mayflower because I wanted to be able to go, I want more information on that. Like when we came here, what did we do? How do I make reparations for that? You know, it's like that's in my DNA of healing that needs to happen. And so it, it's so complex. It's not one incident. It is an accumulation and what's being uncovered for oh, all yeah. of us at this time. Mm -hmm. Two things on that. One is you were talking about, you know, being stopped by the cops and this is so... I was, for most of my life, from like five to 13, I, I grew up in suburbia and I, I mean, it was myself and I think in the whole complex, we lived in this townhouse and maybe one other, two maybe other um, black children who were my age and um, went to a high school, 331, 11, black um, kids. Um, and then when I even moved to the city, I did an urban suburban. So it was like busting out to that. So I, in my, so I, uh, mostly all the men that I dated actually had told me that they had been stopped by cops and everything. And I remember one of my first boyfriends was like, do you feel like you're oppressed? And I was like, no, no. You know, I didn't even realize, like, I was like, no, what are you trying? He's like, oh my gosh, you got, you know? And this year I was stopped by a cop and this, so it probably was this summer. I have never been, like afraid or any of those. So those things that like guy was never taught, you know, like you say, yes, do this, you know, I like was actually afraid, had my phone really was looking and it was, it was a white cop and a black cop. The black cop pulled off, went away. And so this, the white cop came up and I was just like, my heart was actually really beating. Like I was thinking, oh my goodness. Like, I just didn't know. Cause I was thinking, is he going to be, who knows? I just, I didn't know. So I was just really, it was just a different like awareness you know, it actually went well. He didn't give me a ticket, you know, or none of that. But it, it was a difference that I was like, wow. And it was also that awareness, like, I've had many, like, people, guy friends, people I dated, Black men who have said this has happened to them. And even then, I wasn't even thinking how traumatic that could be. Mm -hmm. They were stopped just because they were Black and they were driving a nice car or just because they were black, you know? And so I was like, now I was, I was going fast. So I was stopped for the right reason. <laughs> but it was that whole like, oh, you know? Um, so that was when you said that, but then this was the other thing I was thinking about like the whole ancestry. So I decided it was part of girl track and I like tune into them in May and they were doing it's girl track. So if people are listening, I think it's girl track. I'll put it in the, yeah. Okay. It'll be and they're it. really, they were doing this daughters of, so they interviewed like, um, um, which uh, Angela Davis and, um, oh, Giovanni, I can't even think of her last name. Oh, I can't think of her last name either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they, and then they had one with, uh, uh Malcolm X's, uh, um, daughter um and um martin luther king's daughter and they had that so it was like this daughters of and i was thinking well i'm the daughter of carolyn who's the daughter of geraldine and then i thought okay and who's you know uh -huh. and i started like thinking i want to go deeper like why don't i even know this mm -hmm. you know um probably 
two years ago, I did start asking my mother, like, what was these, what was, uh, you know, my grandmother's, what was our grandfather's name? And I started writing those things down because they say you need to really ask people who are living now, <laughs> you know, this history. So I did ancestry.com. I had done 23andMe probably eight, eight years ago. And then that I really just wanted to know the health thing, even though I saw the percentage of African American, European, all of that. And so this though, I was like, I want to know, like, who are my ancestors? Like, what really percentage? Like, what country am I from? <laughs> you know, and I did that, and that was a lot of emotion. So I'm doing this on top of because by the time I got my results and all this, this was like, it was end of June. And it was interesting because my mother first got her results because I was like, I wanted my mother to do it. I wanted my sister to do it. I was like, <laughs> buy your kits. They're on sale. We got to know. We got to know. And my mother's results came back first. And it was saying they had this woman up there who was her cousin who was, oh, because growing up, this is a side, like people swore like they were just, because I have a lighter skin, my eyes are lighter, but they were, they were like, you have to have a white parent. I was like, no, both of my parents are black. They are. And I mean, I would almost get in arguments with people because they were swearing, you know, and I, right. both of my grandparents on both sides were black. So I was like, no. Well, my mother's thing came up and it was it's her cousin, a first cousin who was a white woman from, she lived in, she lives in the States, but she was from, um, when I looked at the whole thing and I started going from the Netherlands. And so, and it was like seeing, I was like, okay, so this started opening up a whole, like, who is this woman? Okay. So who was our grandfather? Who was my mother's father? And so this started like opening up a lot of stuff. But on top of that, I looked at my grandmother's mother so my great-grandmother um and she had died when she was 30. I knew she had died when my grandma was four but I didn't know she died it was 30. I was able to find her like death certificate wow and I found out like they were from Henning Tennessee that she had died July 5th, 1914. And it said some heart disease. And then it said unknown mother and father. And this brought up so much emotions because the person who signed the death certificate, she was a laborer. Mm -hmm. And it, so she worked on this farm and the, the, it was a man who signed it. And then when I start researching this farm and finding out he was a Confederate and all this stuff. And I thought I was so angry and so sad because I was like, they didn't care enough for her to find out who her mother and father were. Mm -hmm. And she died at 30 years old. And then I started thinking of my grandmother and how resilient, you know, she was four and all this stuff, but it just brought up so much emotions. Plus the fact that on this other side, this lady who I reached out to, who was my mother's first cousin, who basically, basically I could, did not want to open that box up mm -hmm. at all. Just mm -hmm. short period answer. And I thought, wow. And so that was a lot of emotions of like, okay, there's this part and really wanting to know like, okay, how did that happen? And then there's this other part of somebody not even being considered and, and then getting mad that I can't even follow my genes all the way back or, you know, the ancestors because somebody didn't take the time enough to actually write that. And I don't really believe that it was a heart attack. I believe in Tennessee, hitting Tennessee on July 5th, she was outside working and probably had a heat stroke, you know? And so I, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I was just like, so these have been, but then there's also been exciting. Some guy reached out to my sister, who's our sixth cousin, and actually opened up a whole bunch of things where I was able to find on my, hence why I found with my grandfather, who I didn't know, 
I found out like this whole lineage up on, I was like, wow. So that felt like magical and exciting because this guy just happened to reach out to my sister. My sister's like, well, I'll reach out to my sister because she's really into this and doing this. And he was able to connect a lot of the um, dots. So there's been like that excitement. Then there's been like the grief and then there's been the anger and then there's been the pain all in my personal thing where you got this like thing that's happening in our country, you know, these layers of things that are happening. So it's really opened up a lot of like, oh, I, I wanna know this. I wanna know who I am. I wanna know my ancestors. I want, like, I'm like, if there was no COVID, I'd be traveling to Tennessee. I'm like, I'm, I'm tra <laughs> traveling. Cause I was like, oh, the country's Nigeria. I need to go to Nigeria. I need to go and I'm thinking everything's, you know, in West, uh, no. Virginia, Charles City, Virginia. So I'm like, I need to go to all these places. I want to go to the burial sites. And watching that movie, which I know you watched, the um, what is it? Un was it Uncomfortable Truth? Oh, the Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, no, no. I know what you're talking about. Um, inconvenient Truth? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Like all that, like you're saying, I started go diving into like all these documentaries, all these movies. And I'm like, because oh, he talked about like going to the, uh, it, uh, for people who don't know, it is, um, it's a white man who's talking about, you know, how his mother or grandmother told him the story about uh, a, a slave that they had and all of this. And he was saying, again, like they didn't care enough. Like this was such an important person in their lives that they remembered her name, but he went, he couldn't find a grave site, any of this. And it was just like, wow, like, like you're experiencing, I was experiencing myself. I'm looking at all these things that are, you know, happening, diving in, looking at documentaries, reading books, and so there was this whole awakening that's going on. You had all these emotions and yeah, that 2020. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, tying it together, it's, uh, I was reading a book by uh, Judy Chicago, who is an artist and she was writing, she wrote a book. Um, now I can't remember through the something. Um, but she was talking about in the 60s when she was learning art, that art was taught from a man's perspective and she was learning sculpture and the tools weren't even designed for smaller hands, for a woman's hands, that it had to be a certain strength that you had to be able to do this kind of sculpture and everything. And she began to research it and claim art for women. And then she began to research and she found that there were art women artists who just were not included in the texts, who were not in the, the um, art museums and everything. And when I started, I was writing about that with the Sacred Feminine, uh, 30 Days of Writing, about how their voices were there. We just didn't keep them alive. You know, that we have to keep the stories alive. And I said, and it's the same thing for for black people, for people of color, that the, the stories are there. We just have to look for them and mm -hmm. help bring them visible, you know, help make them visible. Cause that's what we're, we're discovering, right? I mean, about the uh, Black Wall Street in right. Tulsa, Oklahoma and how that story was buried for so long mm -hmm. and, or kept small, you know, kept where people who were in that area might have known but it wasn't and so we're we're uncovering we're revealing and all these emotions are coming up and let's just segue that into your chef um program because it feels like the returning to the earth because i know i've also been doing a lot around ancestral stuff and it was something that happened last october i had some things going on with my daughters and i was like I need to heal the lineage of the ancestry. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that piece? I already, I knew the names because uh, my grandmother was really into genealogy, but it's like, but how did we treat each other? How did we, like, what's the stuff we're carrying in the cells of our body? The trauma, 
that's never been addressed, that's never been healed. And so I did, I was diving into that also to get back to the indigenous, to get back to right. the earth. When do we disconnect mm -hmm. from the earth with our ancestry and all? And I feel like there's something in that that may have drawn you to it, but um, tell, tell us about anything you want to talk about with chef. I mean, to, um, as I said, it's crystals, herbs, essential oils, and food. And I've been in your programs with food and uh, used doTERRA, and uh, I'm excited to get into that a little bit more also. So tell, tell us about that. Yes, yeah. So it's funny you used to talk about October because last year, 2019, I started reading the book Sacred Woman by Queen Afu, and it was I had the book on my Kindle for uh, probably like three years and I just I'll buy books and then I just wait till I get kind of this intuitive hit to read them and that time I was like it was September and I just felt like opening it up and I started reading it and I was like wow and she really goes into like the history and African history and all this stuff and you stay on. So she has different things like you, you can spend seven days or as long as you need on a certain thing. So at first it was about healing your womb and then it was about, you know, and so even with that, prior to that, she was just talking about the history and women and African women and all that stuff. And I'm like, wow. So even back then I was like, doing that and then that she goes in from the womb then it was about your thoughts and your thoughts which i stayed there for a while <laughs> i'm mm -hmm. like how you're thinking i um and even in that she talks about food and she talks it's funny essential oils and colors and uh crystals and all these different things to support you on each of those things and you build an altar which i had never built an altar and then i built an altar <laughs> my altar back uh-huh yes <laughs> i love it love so it. then i was like okay let me you know and then i went to a herb conference in october and it's a southeastern women's herbal conference that i had gone many years before it's went on for 15 years it was the 15th anniversary and i went with one of my good friends from fourth grade and we're like this is the last year let's go and it was also interesting because they this was probably six or seven years ago they had a tent for women of color separate tent that you could go you could just talk you could do, it was a place of healing they also had a red tent and stuff Mm -hmm. So anyway, but this year they were really focusing a lot on black women, um, herbs for uh, black community, you know, different things, the history, but not even black because people of color, um, Native Americans, mm -hmm. Hispanic, and we were like, oh yes, we're going, we're going. And so that was like, okay, I've always loved herbs. I've, like I said, I went to that conference a long time ago. I feel like it's medicines of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something, it, it was all of a sudden like, okay, I got into crystals probably heavily a couple, maybe three years ago, always liked them. Essential oils forever, um, food forever, you know. <laughs> But all of this, and then there was another book I received and it was just like, so saying supporting yourself. And I, it was actually early, I think it was springtime that I started thinking, I want to do more on supporting people around that and being very specific and doing these videos. And I was like, oh, I'll do YouTube videos because I, I, I like doing videos and everything. And I don't even know if that's when I thought of the word chef. I don't think it was, but I was like, I'll do it and I'll do it weekly and I'll do something. I'll do something on crystals. I'll do something on food, essential oils, you know, just to really support. Then COVID happened, then all these emotions and all this. And I, and like, I went in, so I was like, oh, I can't. And there was still this thing. Well, and I, and I felt okay, not doing it. It was still there, but I was like, oh no, that's just too much energy. 
get on a video and all of this. Yet at the same time, there's this like on the side, like, okay, I knew I would eventually get to it or do it when intuitively I was more drawn. Like it was, I was really feeling like, no, this is not the time. This is just not the time. It's not. Then there were these conferences because also I was finding out history and I was finding out about herbs and just how the herbs, you know, that has been really part of the BIPOC, you know, that Blacks, Indigenous, people of color have used herbs and how it had been whitewashed, you mm -hmm. know, and I was attending conferences even by white women who were saying this, like, yeah, it's been whitewashed. And so there was all these like um, resources on Black herbalists. There was conferences around it. I start learning more about that. And then I was really feeling like, oh, that's what I want to do. I was feeling like, I, how can I support the Black community around this? How can I incorporate this into what I do? I want to be that, per, you know, person who supports, like, this is so important to who we are as, as what well, was so important to me as a Black woman, you know, and I've always been like medicines of the earth and food and what we eat and everything, but I, I, I wanted to make it more into that, like, this is really can be for Black women, you know, Black communities, all of that. And I kept thinking, okay, what, what? I wanted to do more. I wanted to support people more, but still there was this, okay, not yet, not yet. You know, just sit on it, journal, meditate, it'll come. And I knew it would. And then it was like August, around August that it was just like, yeah, now is the time. And I think that's when Chef came to me. I was like, Chef, crystal herbs, essential oils of food. Yes, yes. And it was like, yes, okay, I will, I will do this. I will talk about crystals one week. And then around the seasons, you know, cause I was like, I will do it for monthly. So I'll see what, or, you know, crystals support you for that month. And, and then herbs, you know, and, and, and these are things that I have used over the years, not just this year, even more this year, but over the years who that have supported my wellness. It's what I support women, especially the busy superwoman, you know, the modern day superwoman. It's like, I've been doing that. And this was like, oh, but this can be, it can be accessible. Like people can watch it. It helps me to learn more because part of that was, all right, let me see the history of a lot of the history of foods I did some years ago where I would look up like history of um, especially Southern food, you know, mm -hmm. and um, so Black American food, seeing what foods are actually native to Africa. Africa. Um, and then I was like, oh yes, I can do this with herbs and essential oils and crystals. And so then it just, felt right. And I was just like, yes, I'm going to do it. And one day I was just like, yes, today, just get on and talk about how you're going to do this, you know, and talk about your experience and how this can support people. And then that's, that's basically where it was, you know, birthed into because it just felt like birthing, which felt the opposite of autumn. It felt spring, but it felt like the right time. And it was just like, I have the energy I've gone in enough still honoring that it's fall and still honoring like you know going in journaling and stuff like that but the energy it's like all this time has been like to be to be still to listen to be guided to continue to be guided so that when i'm I, i'm showing up it's not it's more you know spirit that's like, yes, you're going to share this. And, and I always, I, I even feel okay. Like, okay, I didn't, I didn't do it this week. It's okay. It's okay. When it's, it's a, when I'm supposed to show up and do it, I'm going to hit, have that hit and I will show up and do it. And so I'm not even putting the pressure on myself of, okay, 
it's got to be this week. It's got to be, you know, um, it's just wherever. Or whenever I get like, I'm so excited. I got burdock root. <laughs> I've been going to mom's to my organic market in Maryland. And I guess it's in also Virginia that I've been going there looking for burdock root because burdock root, it's really supportive. It helps support your liver. It is a root, which is, so we're talking about roots. So nourishing for the for the root chakra grounded. If we think about roots literally and figuratively, but the other thing is it supports the liver and our liver is where we hold a lot of our emotions and a lot of that can cause congestion. And I just think about as, you know, a black woman and black communities, a lot of times our liver can be because we have that, like we've stuffed, you know, that energy down and it's can, energetically congestion to our um, liver and burdock root is so good. And you can, and I, I was so happy. I went there the other day and I was like, yes, I can now do my video on burdock root. <laughs> I, I love it. And I want to encourage everyone to go to the YouTube channel. Also, I did go to um, uh, Trader Joe's and I got the cassava coconut. Oh, chips, it, yes. Chips. Matter of fact, I went there yesterday so I could hold up the bag because I'd already eaten the other <laughs> bag and they were out, totally out. You know, I'm like, it's become very, very popular. So <laughs> <laughs> and they are, yes. I did do a video on that. I do a uh part of the food, but it's kind of a separate, is this healthy or not? And I've been doing that a while on, is this healthy or not? Um, because I'm all about read your labels, read the labels. And so I get to try these foods and literally I'm trying them on the video. Oh, that was so fun. so fun. That's why I said, even though we hadn't talked, I felt like, well, of course we've talked. I'm like watching you eat those chips and then I'm going to Trader Joe's and getting them for the inspiration. You know, I also want to just shine a light on something for the listeners that as I'm listening to the different parts of what's been happening for you over the last year, first of all, there, this, the birthing of chef came out of a time period. It came out of you following the interest of herbs and food and, you know, for years. And then, and then something that said, I need to read this book and that happened last October, you know, it was like, I do the same thing. I have so many books on audible and then I'll be like, Oh, wait, that's the one I want right. to listen to now. It just pops in, but you really demonstrated that kind of, I, I mean, when I look at your YouTube channel, it looked like you were going to get, you were going to start sharing some more last February and then COVID hit. You're a nurse. You are, you're, you're, in the, you know, you had to go to work when other people were told to stay home, you're, you were going to work. And then all of the other things that were happening, and of course, the racial injustice and the deaths and, and then just pulling in and using the using herbs, using crystals, using food, honoring what was going on for you. I mean, you and I had talked about, okay, summer wasn't about salads this year. It was about more comfort, heavier food. It was honoring what the body needs. And then you reached this period where it was like, okay, I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm coming out of this cocoon right. time. I'm ready to reconnect and share. And there are still emotions and everything. But to me, that's that is the journey of carving a new path. We are not, anytime we go through a change and certainly we're going through a global change right now, mm -hmm. we don't ever go back. You know, we don't just go back to the way things were. It, it's, it, this, this is just something we're seeing on a collective, right? but it happens for us individually throughout our lives. And so this kind of doing the study, trying some things, going back within, waiting for the timing, and then, and then ding, I'm there, I'm ready, I'm hopping on. Maybe it's not the perfect planned out thing. Oh, thank goodness, we're past that. <laughs> There's anything, it's like having Zoom and having animals that walk right. across keyboards and 
people knocking on the door and saying, oh, I'm recording, but I have to go answer the door. You know, <laughs> all these things, it's like we're letting go of the, the perfection. And I think that's a really, really healthy thing. So uh, I love it, the way you were weaving all of that together. I can just see that whole, uh, what happens for us when, when we are moving into something new or getting deeper with something that we, that we really love. And I know I could talk with you forever, but I'm thinking we should look at kind of wrapping up. And I'm wondering if there are some things that you could share with us about like an herb for us to use right now, or I mean, I encourage everyone to go to the YouTube videos for the longer mm -hmm. descriptions and all, but uh, what would you like to share with us today? So sure, yes. Um, I was looking. Ah, this one's calling to me now. So I would say right now with everything that's going on, you know, rose quartz has been uh, a crystal that I have been using a lot, mm -hmm. um, especially during the day. Rose quartz is so good for your heart energy. It's so soothing it just it's all about like that self-love you know just giving yourself that self-love that self-care that during that time that's what i was doing i was just loving myself up you know what i mean just yes. nourishing myself listening you know like you're saying listening to my inner guidance mm -hmm. my spirit intuition, God, all that. I was just going in and listening and it's just this. And it's just like, cause you're feeling a lot of autumn time, time for grief. It is okay. Allow that grief to come up. This is one other one, <laughs> which I did talk about, but Apache tears, hmm. which is a very good one for grief. That is, um, you know, you'll have to watch my YouTube channel on what it was basically a, about um, a Native American tribe and the, they were fighting um, the colonists who were coming after them. And they, instead of surrender, the men jumped over the cliff. So this is folklore. And then they and the women and the children were weeping and crying. And they're saying these are the, the Apache tears that came out, which is actually not even a crystal. It's more a volcanic um, stone, but this is really good. Like I will hold it in my hand. I actually make a little, I don't have it, but I get these and I add herbs and crystals in it. And I actually, I've been carrying them. So I have one with rose, rose also dried rose is very good for the heart. So if we think about herbs, Mm -hmm. dried um rose lavender because lavender is very soothing and calming so when we have all these emotions going on so i actually have one that has all of that in it along with um i have a pachi tear i have a, a clear quartz which is very much for clarity it also amplifies um whatever you want so manifestation if you're wanting something in your life because i love carnelian i mean i have like mm -hmm. 10 carnelian <laughs> over there mm -hmm. i love carnelian because it's all about the sacral chakra it keeps you in the flow keeps you creative creative so i always have that stone in my little pouch mm -hmm. and um i think what else i think i have sodiolite which is good for speaking your truth and I feel like that's so important for us to honor ourselves right now and speak up and speak out and honoring our own truth. Awesome. Um, then I would say for the other herbs right now, that's really good is like I said, burdock root, which you can get burdock root tea. It's kind of hard to find the fresh root. You can grow it and you get the root. You can actually chop it up though and eat it as food, which I made a soup. I was yesterday feeling, was it yes? It was Sunday. Mm -hmm. I love soups because I feel like you can be so creative with soups. Um, and I was just like, yeah, so I'm at the store and I'm like, okay, I got shiitake mushrooms, any type of like shiitake, mataki, oyster mushrooms. All of those are good during this time of year because they boost your immune system. Um, think about them. They're very earthy. They're really good at supporting your root. Uh, so I put shiitake in there, onions, very good, uh, garlic, 
uh, that's very good in supporting your immune system, which we really need now. And as we're seeing, COVID is, I mean, autumn and winter, I don't know, it's, it's yeah. a, a bit, um, things, numbers are rising. So um, support yourself, support your immune system. And then I put, I had this lemongrass and turmeric paste that I added to it. And um, I added the burdock root. I peeled it and I chopped it up and I added that in there. And I also added boy choy um, as the greens and carrots, carrots. So any type of root vegetables, beets, carrots, sweet potatoes. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And it's so comfortable bake a sweet potato, add some coconut oil or butter. Mm -hmm. I like coconut oil and a little coconut bit of cinnamon. <gasps> it's heaven, it's heaven. I learned, it's... That, I learned that from you. The <laughs> yes, so good. Coconut oil and cinnamon, yeah. So yeah, good. so those are really good. And I would say for the, um, eat with the seasons, you know, I, um, Andrew was talking about that. We've got so disconnected from like earth and nature and really, you know, and then that's made us disconnected from our bodies. Cause I will tell you, my body will tell me, like, I start, like, I'm like, I want um, sweet potatoes. I want butternut squash. I start craving that in September. Mm -hmm. I do not crave it in the summer. You know, it's like, this is what I want. And this is what, and when we get more connected, our bodies will naturally start craving that um, winter squash, acorn squash, all of those really good. But as you were saying, um, you were saying um, disconnected from that. The other thing is the essential oils. So aromatherapy, so good for us. I mean, it's so good. Our olfactory, you know, um, part of our brain, it helps with, you know, the memories and everything. And so that's like our, our, our first sense that can actually really, we can shift our mood just by inhaling lavender, lavender, just because we can be so stressed, especially modern day women, you know, just stress. Yeah. <laughs> Pouring some lavender on your hands, just inhaling it, it helps with sleep. That is a very good one. Also, as you, so you could do the rose, rose quartz or rose, rose essential oil and the touch and you could just put it on your heart and um where was that oh here we go rose yes rose and just put it rose touch this is a little less because just the rose itself is pricey because it takes so many rose petals mm -hmm. to make um you know a drop of essential oil i think like two thousand rose petals or something to make a drop i mean it's like ridiculous so um yeah i just rub it on my heart um you know just to soothe me but lavender rose um and if you want uplifting wild orange again and that's really good for creativity mm -hmm. sacral chakra keeping you in the flow all of those um and because it's modern day super you know, women might have just been like going through and not listening and as a result felt that adrenal fatigue and all of that stuff. So adaptogens can help herb wise. Um, the one big one is what I love is Shadavaria. If you tend to be more dry, knowing your constitution, I tend to be more dry in constitution, more Vata and Ayurveda, mm -hmm. Vata Pitta. So Shavatari is more moistening. So a lot of these things is what I really recommend is that you know your constitution, everything, because a lot of times you can read, you know, you can look up Google, Google's good, but you know, you think, oh, I have this and I'm going to take this and it actually worsens your symptoms because it's all about, am I dry? Am I moist? Am I damp? Am I more hot? You know, and then it's depending where you are in your life journey, you know, if you're puberty, if you're, you know, menopausal, premenopausal, you know, and yeah. so those are just some, yeah, see, I could go on and on about tips. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I'm always inspired. I mean, I've always appreciated that about you, your enthusiasm, your knowledge, your desire to get to the truth about things, your willingness to 
uh, say, oh, I thought it was that, but now I see it's this, you know, to change and, and adapt and, and also all of that. So is there anything else you want to say as we're closing here? I would just say for everyone to allow, you know, yourself to feel. I mean, I think this is part of uh, the more, I wouldn't even say it's the therapy, you know, as of being a therapist. I think it's more that I am a feeler. I'm more, you know, I'm a water sign. I emotions, I emote emotions, you know, but a lot of people, I know that's hard. And I know it's black women, like you're told many times not to. And it's like, these times are emotional there is grief that would come up, allow that grief to process. There is, you know, anger that will actually help you to act. I know for me that anger helped me to be like, well, why don't I know this? And why has this happened? And what can I, I mean, I think that's kind of like, what can I do different? What can I do to support my community? How can I speak up? And so, listening to those emotions, not thinking of them as bad or good. They're just feelings in, in motion and they're supposed to come through and out and, and just allowing those and just being kind and loving to yourself and giving yourself that space, just that space to be. I mean, that, that has been my journey <laughs> mm for some time of just being. And I've, I've really got to that place of allowing and being and the magic, oh my gosh, the magic will happen. The magic, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be any of that. And, and yes, do I still plan? Yeah, but I loosely plan and say, you know what, it could happen, it might not. So allow and compassionate to yourself and, 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 and just listening and, and, and spirit and intuition will guide you. It really will. I appreciate your wisdom. I mean, today I felt anger at one point. I started to cry after that. And then I felt joy and uh, was out in nature before our call. So all, all yes, so true. Yeah. I, those, this is funny. I think people get, get so as part of, girl track so they would have these different the playlists and one it was it was probably one of the first they did it in june they had these walking things so i remember sitting at the table listening to a song it was a gospel song mm-hmm. i went from almost like and i wasn't from grew up in a church where you would shout but my grandmother used to shout so i was like clapping my hands shouting like i felt like the holy spirit was in me and i was thinking then i started like crying and then i started cracking up because i thought my husband's gonna think i have lost my mind because i have just i mean it was just this range of emotions that I was just emoting and I was like, hallelujah. And I was like, and it was just like, but I felt so good. <laughs> but it was just like, what you're saying, it was like, just laying it all, all out. <laughs> that, that's why we need chef right now. So we can feel all of those emotions and have the support of all the tools and all that you've brought. Cassandra, thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed our conversation and hearing all that's been happening for you and and just receiving your wisdom on this. So thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate you and this space and, you know, this podcast and being a part of this. So thank you. Thanks. And thanks to all the listeners for being here and stay tuned for another one. Bye-bye now.